I want to thank uh, ED for the opportunity to share with you all. Thank you all for gathering together. I'm sure some of you have had services already this morning, but we gathered together for a short while on this Palm Sunday uh, as MMS to encourage one another. Thank you all for your partnership in the gospel, whether you are stationed in Singapore or beyond Singapore in all our mission fields. Uh, thank you for your ministry to people uh, beyond our shores. And, and I think the people that God has called us to minister to would experience uh, the disappointment of life on earth. I was just thinking about that passage that uh, Vincent, I think just, no, not Vincent, who just read uh, the Old Testament passage. Uh, Richard, Richard Lepka read for us that passage in Psalm 31, which expresses something of the suffering and the pain uh, of the psalmist on earth. You know, on Palm Sunday, we generally, it's a, a day of celebration. Uh, I see Reverend Benjamin Lee, uh, who is the pastor in charge at Topio Methodist Church, Singapore. He told me that this Sunday morning, they had planned a very happy sort of uh, occasion with the children, and uh, enacting Jesus riding in uh, on a donkey. So I hope that went well, Ben. And then everybody enjoyed waving the palm leaves and that... Uh, and that uh, whoever acted as Jesus didn't fall off the donkey or anything like that. <laughs> but Palm Sunday, usually we, we celebrate. It's a happy occasion because everybody is proclaiming Jesus as king. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. But all of us know that Palm Sunday is only the start of a week, which comes to Good Friday and Crucifixion Friday, if you like. And just before the crucifixion, uh, you, you, we also have the scene uh, where the crowds are, are shouting, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So I think of the, I think of the disappointment, if you like. At Palm Sunday, when everybody is there, presumably everybody is excited. Here is our king. You know, he's coming into Jerusalem. He's going to set us free. All, all our prayers for freedom and liberation and, and joy and happiness. This is our king. He's going to do it. Uh, where, the, where the Romans have been cruel, he's going to deal with them. And so they're, they are excited on Palm Sunday. They're hopeful and they're praising God. But by the time you get to Friday already, those disappointments have been dashed. And even more so with the crucifixion, their king, whom they thought was king, uh, is crucified and dead. So I just want us, I just thought I'd, I'd I, I go beyond that, of course, because we also know the Easter story on Sunday. And so I want to read for, for you these verses in Luke chapter 24, where we've got two disciples and you can sense their disappointment because they've seen their master, their Lord Jesus, crucified on Friday. And they have not yet seen the resurrection. They have not yet... Uh, seen Jesus alive, even though they've heard of such rumors. So let's read this Easter Sunday passage. I read it. Now that same day, two of them, two of the disciples, were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about, what, about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. So you can sense the pain and the disappointment, the despair of, of two of Jesus' disciples. Uh, the excitement of Palm Sunday has long faded as they've seen their master crucified and killed on Friday. And they are still downcast. Verse 18, one of them named Cleopas asked Jesus, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? He asked. The things about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. 
And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. And in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. The angel said to them, how foolish you are. How slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you can sense, even though... Uh, the resurrection has taken place. The disciples have not yet really come to believe that Jesus is alive. They're still very disappointed. They're still very downcast. Uh, the, the excitement of Palm Sunday, the horror of Good Friday, they're in despair. You can sense that despair in their words. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. We live in a world where many people face great disappointment, where their dreams and their hopes of a good future, or whether for their families or their own lives, their businesses, their relationships, hopes often get dashed. And sometimes the dreams that we have are completely uh, are dissolved, that we don't really feel uh, that there is a future. I'm sure many of us, uh, wherever we are, uh, we, we know that there are people who, who struggle with, with this despair and this disappointment, disappointed hopes. And so I thought we'd just remind ourselves of the message of Easter. The two disciples, too, were, were still in great despair. And what did Jesus say to them to try and encourage them, if you like, to try and help them understand things? But before that, let me uh, just share with you the words of a poem uh, by a New Testament writer, Don Carson, who expresses, I think, some of the disappointment and the sadness that many people in our world face. It is based on uh, this passage in Luke 24 of the two disciples who walked home. A study in defeat and loss, mm -hmm. explaining to a stranger why the gloom how Jesus seemed to be the king before his cross. How all their hopes lay buried in his tomb. So you can sense that sense of despair, that loss, that pain. I just pause for a little while, just for you maybe to think and see whether the spirit of God prompts into your mind the, the name of a friend or the face of a friend whom you know who is feeling a little like these two disciples who, who felt all their hopes had been dashed, feeling disappointed. Let's pause to remember someone we know. There are many in this world uh, whose, dis whose hopes have been uh, disappointed and they, they really don't see a bright future ahead. Let's pray for them. Let's pray that God will somehow reignite their hope, resurrect their hope, uh, help them to see Jesus and find strength and hope for the future to face tomorrow. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem us. Mm. And of course, we know that Jesus is the one who was going to redeem them. But they had lost hope. Why? Because they had seen Jesus killed, crucified. They had seen Jesus, their king, or the one they thought was their king, going through so, so much agony. And, and so for them, that death signaled the end 
they must have been wrong. Jesus couldn't possibly be the one to redeem them because he is dead. So that was the, the state of their disappointment. Notice how then Jesus tries to explain to them that in fact, he really is the one who is going to redeem them and that there is no reason for them to lose hope. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, in other words, he tries to give them an understanding of all the scriptures concerning himself. And he says to the disciples, if you really understood what the scriptures said, you would realize that the prophets had already told us that the Messiah or the Christ would suffer, would have to suffer these things, would have to suffer and die and be crucified. So you should not really have been, although I understand you are sad to have seen the Christ get crucified, you shouldn't have been surprised really because the scriptures had already warned that the Christ would suffer on earth. He would be rejected. He would look as if he has been defeated. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things? I don't know whether you remember, but this really also was what uh, Reverend Vince, uh, Vincent Lim read in, in the New Testament reading we just heard from John chapter 12. Don't you realize that the seed has to die first and get buried before it can really bear fruit? Uh, so, so, that, so that idea of the, oh no, it wasn't Vincent who read that passage, was it? Who was it who read that? Oh yes, it was Vincent. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it will not bear fruit. So Jesus is trying to say that actually scripture says again and again and again that it, one has to suffer first in order for the glory and the fruit to come. And this is certainly true for himself. And so he led them to this understanding. He is truly the Christ. He, he is the one who is coming to redeem Israel, but he had to be crucified. He had to suffer first. Jesus also said this to his disciples just before he was crucified. So really, again, they should have got it, but it is hard for them and they didn't get it. Before he was crucified, the night before, in fact, he was crucified, in John chapter 16, Jesus said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace, so that you won't be overly troubled when you see the suffering that I go through, when you see the suffering that you go through when you are here on earth. John 16, 33, these words immediately carry on to say, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This is the message of Good Friday and Easter Sunday. The message is not that because Jesus died on the cross and suffered on the cross, we no longer have to face death. No, we no longer have to suffer. Jesus tries to explain to his two disciples, all of the scriptures actually point to the fact that the Messiah has to suffer. And Jesus himself said, in this world, you will suffer. But the message of Easter is that Good Friday, the suffering of Good Friday, is not the final word. Beyond the suffering on earth, beyond the suffering that leads to death, comes the glory of resurrection. This, I think, is also what Jesus meant when he said in the famous verse, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily. So obviously Jesus is talking not literally because you cannot be literally killed every day. But Jesus is saying that every day may be a day of suffering and pain. You must be willing to bear the daily sufferings of life, the tribulations of life and follow me. Follow Jesus, who also suffered so much on earth. And so we follow him into his daily suffering. 
And for Jesus, his suffering culminated in a very cruel and a very painful death on earth. And so that may also happen to some of us. But Jesus' promise is that beyond the earthly suffering and pain, we follow him into the suffering, we follow him out of the suffering, into resurrection and glory. That is the Christian hope. The Christian promise, the promise of Easter, is not that if we believe in Jesus, then life on earth will be free from suffering because Jesus has suffered for us, we don't have to suffer. Because Jesus has died and conquered death, we don't have to die. Jesus has conquered death. No, that is not the message of Jesus. That is not the message of all the scriptures. All the scriptures point towards the fact that on earth, we are likely to suffer. But the promise of scripture is that beyond the suffering comes the glory of resurrection. We follow Jesus, our Lord. We take up our daily cross of suffering. We are crucified, but we rise again. And so the disciples begin to understand the scriptures and their hearts are inspired. So may we too come to understand the good news of res the resurrection. And this is the news we try to bring to all around us. We live in a world where many around us in our communities live with much suffering and trouble and pain. A lot of disappointment, frustration, dreams that have been dashed. We are unable to promise them immediately uh, the removal of all earthly suffering. We are unable to do that because our Lord Jesus doesn't even do that. In fact, our Lord Jesus warns us that on earth, in this world, there will be much trouble. But somehow we pray that beyond the trouble of this earth, we bring them the message uh, that beyond death and despair is resurrection and hope everlasting. So may God give us wisdom uh, to bring this good news. Uh, that Jesus promises us that death is not the final word. Despair is not the final word, but glory and hope. I, I close by sharing with you a famous poem, John Donne's poem entitled Death. Now, John Donne is, is perhaps more famous, uh, known more famously for being a great English poet. But actually, he was also a pastor, right? He was an Anglican priest. And he lived during the, a time when thousands were dying every day in England because of the plague. Uh, John Donne himself would uh, later succumb to an illness, whether it was the plague or some other illness, he too would die. But as a pastor ministering so often to families who had experienced death, uh, he wrote this poem. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkest thou dost overthrow, they do not really die, you poor death, nor yet canst you kill me. One short sleep past, we will wake eternally. And you, death, shall be no more. You, death, shall die. This is the Christian hope. This is what Jesus has, Jesus' death and resurrection promises us. This is the good news that we can bring to a world where no matter how, we, how much we try to remove the causes of death and despair, uh, death does continue to reap, to uh, do what it can uh, here on earth. But we bring the message that all death does in the end is send us to one short sleep, but we will wake eternally. And so we bring this good news of the gospel to others. So may God give us wisdom to bring this sort of comfort uh, in a world where there is so much death and so much despair. Sometimes I'm asked, what does it mean to be a Christian? 
One way of answering that is to say that a Christian is someone who isn't too proud to admit that we need the comfort and the hope of God's promise that the suffering and pain of life on earth is not the final uh, story, not the final chapter in our lives. And so this Holy Week, this Good Friday, this Resurrection Sunday, let's all become Christians again. And let's encourage more and more to become Christians who cling on to the promise and comfort that even though in this world we will have trouble, we can take heart because the Jesus who died on Friday rose again on Sunday and he has overcome the world. May God give us wisdom, love, and strength to bring this message of hope mm. in a world where many of us lose hope. And I end then with another verse that the same uh, writer, Don Carson, wrote concerning the despair that the two disciples had on the road to Emmaus. He speaks of the present, where even though long years have passed since Jesus' resurrection, still we face the fear of death which steals our loved ones, leaving us undone, and still confronts us, beckoning with icy breath, the final terror when life's course is run. But this I know, the Savior passed this way before, his body clothed in immortality. The sting's been drawn, the power of sin has been destroyed. We sing, death has been swallowed up in victory. Amen.